Let's transition now. We've talked about staging, we've talked about neoadjuvant chemotherapy, randomized phase three trial that shows there's no benefit here. Talked about the controversy between minimally invasive surgery. Let's transition to metastatic disease. What is the standard treatment for first-line metastatic disease in cervical cancer? Yeah, uh, based on uh, GOG240, which reported here at this meeting um, in 2013, uh, chemotherapy doublets, uh, platinum doublet, most commonly uh, cisplatin, paclitaxel with bevacizumab. Um, most uh, or many uh, oncologists are using carboplatin um, and uh, paclitaxel plus bevacizumab extrapolating from a uh, Japanese study, 0505, which showed significant non-inferiority between the two platinum-based doublets. There was no bevacizumab in that study. Importantly, though, um, in subset analysis, patients that are cisplatin naive, um, who never received it with uh, radiotherapy, should probably stick with the cisplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab triplet for first-line treatment of recurrence. And you and I have worked hard to do, uh, on this as a, as a collaboration, so frontline Platinum paclitaxel, with or without BEV, try to get BEV in if, as long as there's not a contraindication, right. and counsel the patient, okay? And, and um, if she's cisplatin naive, maybe cisplatin rather than carbo, yep. okay? So what's the second line standard, Dr. Beer, for metastatic cervical cancer? Well, there is none, essentially. And it's a dismal diagnosis, unfortunately. So the bar is low there for the development of new and novel right. agents. But we got an approval yep. on June 12th. Tell yep. us about that June 12th, 2018 approval. Yeah, so, you know, using IO and, and Pembro was approved in um, essentially uh, viral-related HPV um, disease. And um, it's interesting because the, the response rates are not overwhelming, right, 14%. 14%, that's right. But those patients who respond, uh, I think, do reasonably well with a long duration. So we have uh, two other trials now that are trying to, let's talk about frontline, back to you, Krish. Two trials that are trying to add atezolizumab to the platinum taxane BEV, four drugs versus three, the BCC, and then uh, uh, obviously pembrolizumab also in that same setting, platinum taxane pembro with or without BEV. So we're trying to do quadruplet therapy. Um, tell us about your study with uh, uh, simiplumab second line. So simiplumab's an anti-PD-1 molecule. As you know, it's been approved for cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma last year, and we're studying that in the second line setting um, for patients who have progressed on platinum. They didn't have to have bevacizumab up front, but um, they must have had to progress on platinum, and we're looking to see if um, in the second line setting, a monotherapy, IO, um, is gonna be effective and tolerable. So platinum taxane bev front line, Pembrolizumab accelerated approval second line, trying to show an OS benefit with simiplumab second line, and then first line trying to do quadruplet BevIO with chemotherapy. So that's that's good. Um, uh, Jubilee, tell me about this uh, TIL therapy, tumor infiltrating lymphocyte therapy, and what what's happening in that space as a new now investigational process. Yeah, so I think this is really intriguing. Actually, uh, the concept is uh, harvesting metastatic tumor, metastatic cervical cancer from a patient, uh, and, uh, and essentially preserving it, sending it so that it can be um, purified and the TILs, the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, can be um, magnified and billions of cells are then uh, transported back. Uh, once the patient's immunosuppressed with chemotherapy, uh, they have their infusion of TILs uh, given and um, then they're followed up with IL-2. So uh, Dr. Jaziri presented some of that data here and showed a 44% objective response rate. Second line cervical cancer, 44%. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Take the till out, expand them, marrow depleting chemotherapy, put them back, stimulate with IL-2. I like really it. So you were talking to me about they got breakthrough designation. Yeah. yeah, so you know, the FDA has a number of different sort of programs for agents that look interesting. Fast Track is actually sort of the first, they got Fast Track I think in February, and that allows them to get access to the FDA, communicate with people. The next level up was Breakthrough, and right. they've gotten that, and that allows them actually to communicate with the very senior level in the FDA. So I, I'm not sure that guarantees it will be successful therapy. What it, what it means is that there are people who have looked at this and right. are quite excited. 
I, I think that's very exciting. Yeah, it's really innovative. Very and innovative. It follows up but it's with, toxic, right? Follows so, up with the data we've seen out of the NCI, right? That, 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 the, the difference yeah. between this product is it's scalable and you can transport it across the country. So uh, the reason the initial trials were done at the NCI was because they had difficulty, uh, you know, again, shipping these t tills uh, across the country, maybe even across the Atlantic Ocean. So now they have a preserved product that they can ship, and they can even save so you can actually give it again. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, and, and that's really been the transformation in the science to make this scalable, reproducible, and, 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 and sort of an opportunity uh, across the country. So Chris, um, so that's one experimental therapy. Uh, there's another um, uh, antibody drug conjugate. Tell us about yeah. that in cervical cancer. So um, tisotumab vidotin um, is an antibody drug conjugate that targets the folic, uh, folic acid receptor. Tissue factor. I mean tissue factor, tissue factor. And in a couple of years ago, we had um, at ESMO, it was reported an investigator assessed response um, in patients that had recurrent um, cervical cancer, 31% objective response. Just last year at ESMO, there was an update using an independent radiology review, and those same 34 patients in that um, second review uh, response was 41%. So close to what we're seeing with TILS, um, really exciting, and the uh, drug's being studied um, with uh, larger cohorts of patients right now. Yeah, so, so Dr. Beer said, oh, you know, recurrent cervical cancer is a very poor prognosis. Tom said, in ovarian cancer, we're getting lots and lines of therapy, and here we go. So I would really like this to be someday where patients can get multiple lines of therapy. Chemotherapy BEV with or without IO, they didn't get IO frontline, get IO again, and then get an antibody drug conjugate, and then you have TIL on the table. So maybe we can, and, and, and just like in ovarian cancer, if we can do these PFS on top of PFS, we can increase the prevalence, which is really increasing the survival. Right, and you add to that factor that this is a patient population that's fairly young, right. and probably in many ways, um, healthier than ovarian cancer patients. They should be able to tolerate more regimens, including relatively toxic the ones one like TIL. The one difficulty with these patients, though, um, that present with advanced disease and they're the most likely to recur is that they, they have radiation. And that, that changes things a little bit in terms of drug delivery and, and tissue bioavailability and so forth. And special populations, right? Yeah. So a, a yeah. and low socioeconomic, socioeconomic I mean, factors that figure in in terms of compliance and, and, so and support for getting through these difficult and tedious therapies, you know, with tedious schedules. And you know, you wonder whether that plays into why the response rate to anti-PD-1 is only 14%. Is yeah. it somehow radiation affect that? I, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I don't know the answer. Uh, it's it just might. shocking. It should yeah. be higher. I think it might. So finally, so we talked about TIL, antibody drug conjugates, and IO. Uh, HER2 mutations. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those, Michael. Well, this is an example of how uh, a study like TCGA really pays off. They sequenced a large number of cervical cancer patients, tumors, and 5% of them have activating mutations in uh, HER2. They're mostly in adenos, mm -hmm. uh, and you can target that. Okay. You can target that with a small molecule inhibitor, and it's been done, and you're, they're seeing responses. So the biomarker world in cervical cancer is pd one because if you have pd one you may be able to respond. It's mostly squamous tumors, yep. and also HER2 where you might be able to get a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, um, and that's mostly adenos. Yep. So those are the two validated biomarkers in cervical cancer.